All right, what's going on everyone and welcome back. So I'm pretty excited right now. I'm about 99% of the way through installing the biggest upgrade to my shop to date. Let's check it out. I finally have an actual dust collection system and I could not be any more pumped. So I purchased this Clearview 1450 dust collection system several weeks ago and I've been installing it ever since. And yes, I did purchase this with my own money. Clearview is not a sponsor. They have no clue who I am or that I'm even making a video. But it is cool how I purchased this and I'll talk about that more towards the end of the video, so stick around. But for the meantime, I wanna talk about some of my assembly of my unit and my design and layout of my duct work plus like five or six tips that I did along the way that I found to be very beneficial for my install. So I modified the electrical, I built these custom wall hangers for the ductwork, created a custom transition for a couple spots where the angles for my ductwork were kind of weird and I couldn't buy PVC fittings for them, and then a different joint sealing technique that I found to be very clean and very fast. So stick around and let's dive into it. I started off by installing the supplied wall bracket. This wall bracket is what the unit hangs from and there's two things I wished I would have done completely different. The first one is, is paying closer attention to the overall unit dimensions in the install directions because it would have allowed me to hang this bracket a lot higher off my floor and maximizing the available headroom in my shop due to the duct trajectory. The second thing is, is I wished I would have taken their advice on having a second set of hands and or a piece of equipment to help me lift this motor and blower housing into position. Now it weighs just shy of 90 pounds and it's extremely awkward to pick up. So I I went out to my shop one night after work in full intentions of coming up with a way to rig this up and pick it safely. And I was feeling a little saucy that night and decided to lift this thing myself. And although I did get it onto the brackets, I uh, threw my back out in the process of doing that. So it took me a couple days to kind of recover from that. And when I was feeling better, I came out and installed the Cyclone, only to find out that my duct trajectory was a lot lower than what I wanted. And I did have another eight to 10 inches that I could raise this up. So I came up with a plan to be able to raise this up the additional eight to 10 inches and save my back this time. So I built this trapeze system out of some unistrut and some threaded rod. And this allowed me to install this into place and then incrementally lift this blower housing up the additional eight to 10 inches that I wanted. All right, so the trapeze is all built. So now I just gotta raise it up about eight inches or so that I need to go up. Um, I'm gonna try to go as high as I can and leave about an inch and a half to two inches um, between the lid of the shop and the top of the motor. So these lower unistrut rails are supporting the blue motor bracket. So what I'll do is I'll start on the front side and I'll push it up a few inches, run the nuts up on this lower unistrut, which will hold that in place. And I'll go to the back and do the same. And I'll keep doing that back and forth until I get to the appropriate height. All right, that's more like it. So before I could rotate the cyclone into its final position, I sealed up the square to round up transition with some clear silicone caulk. With the cyclone installed, it was time for me to start installing my ductwork. Now I'm well aware that you need a minimum of five feet of straight pipe leaving your cyclone to prevent any sort of turbulence. And in my application, I actually have enough room for six feet, so that's what I'll be doing. But my question was is you'll notice that this pipe leaves the cyclone at roughly a nine degree incline, but I've seen people install their pipe horizontally into those cyclones. So I called Clearview to ask about that nine degree incline and if I could run my pipe in horizontally. And they told me that you absolutely can run that pipe in horizontally, but that nine degree slope is there by design and it actually helps the wood chips start the cyclone process in the cyclone and prevents them from bypassing the cyclone and hitting your filter causing a premature clogged filter. So with that being said, my question was, how do I transition from the nine degree incline to leveling out my ductwork? Because as far as I was concerned, you couldn't buy a nine degree PVC fitting. So they pointed me to these products on their website and what they are is a six inch sewer pipe to six inch flex hose adapter. And it allows you to cut a small piece of flex hose and make that nine degree angle. Now this actually worked out great for me because it allowed me to get my ductwork up even higher and to also make that nine degree angle that I needed to make to level off my duct runs. So you're probably wondering about these badass hangers that I built and installed across the wall to support the duct runs. And they were super simple to make. I just simply used my CNC machine to cut out all the parts and pieces and then glued and nailed them together. And boom, I had some sweet hangers. Psych. I actually don't own a CNC machine, so I had to do this the old fashioned way like a peasant. I used some scrap plywood and drew out a design that I thought looked nice. 
and then simply used a piece of pipe to trace out to get me the proper outside diameter so these hangers would fit the pipe nice and snugly. So I batched out a whole bunch of these on my bandsaw and my table saw, and then also made these to accommodate a worm drive clamp so I could secure the pipe to the hanger nice and firmly. So a handful of these I made for the horizontal runs, and then I made some that were very similar, but for the vertical runs to secure down these posts and down the vertical parts of my wall. those initial hurdles overcome, it was a matter of running the ductwork to all the tools in my shop. Now I found it beneficial to use some string line in this laser level to ensure that the duct runs were nice and straight and square to each other. Now for any of the duct that turned away from the wall, I used this bailing wire to temporarily suspend the duct from the ceiling while I kind of got the layout figured out. I just found it to be really easy to modify and just easier to work with. Once all the ductwork was complete, I came back with some plumber's tape and permanently suspended that ductwork from the ceiling. When I was designing this system, I had two objectives with this ductwork, and the first one was to ensure that any of the 90 degree bends that I had to make were as large as they possibly could be. So I used two 45s and then a short chunk of six inch pipe to achieve a long radius 90, and this will just reduce the amount of turbulence inside the system. The second one was, is I was trying to get the six inch pipe as close as I possibly could to all my tools just to help maximize the airflow. As the ductwork progressed, I used a number eight by three quarter inch screws to ensure that the fittings didn't pull apart from the pipe and or that my fittings didn't spin out of position. All right, so at this point in time, I was at a bit of a standstill. I was waiting on some more parts to show up. So I thought it would be a good time to start sealing up my joints. Now I want my system to have a clean professional look. So that meant using foil tape was out of the question. So my next choice was silicone caulk, but I was worried about the duct run by the wall and then the two vertical runs down these posts. I just figured it'd be kind of tough to get the caulk gun back there and then it would just start making a mess. So I purchased this self-fusing silicone tape off of Amazon. It was like 16 or 18 bucks for a 15 foot roll. I'll have it linked in my description below. But this stuff worked awesome. It was super fast, it was easy. It kind of self molds around the fittings and there was zero mess. Now I will be using the silicone caulk on all the free air joints where I have better access. But if you're looking for another alternative, this self-fusing silicone tape is definitely brew builds approved. All right, so after spending a couple of weeks installing all of this ductwork, it was time to wire this unit up and try it out for the first time. So I started off by installing this control box in this upper corner, but after getting it installed and wired up, I decided I wanted to make a couple modifications to it. So this unit actually turns on and off with a wireless remote and having this box kind of tucked behind this filter, I was worried that I was gonna have potential interference issues. So my first plan of attack was gonna be installing this wireless sensor in a more open location to hopefully prevent that from happening. Now the second modification I wanted to make is having a background in the electrical industry, I know that these larger motors do not like to be cycled on frequently in a short amount of time. In fact, this manufacturer states that they recommend no more than four on and off cycles in a one hour period. So I began by removing the control box from the wall and then removing all of the components from it. So I designed up a time delayed circuit which would incorporate this time delayed relay and this will force the system to run for a minimum of 15 minutes. Now the reasoning behind this 15 minute time delay is it actually takes 10 to 15 minutes of this motor running for it to properly cool itself and it will prevent any sort of premature failure of the starting capacitor. Now on top of that it will actually be beneficial to ensure that all this ductwork is clean before the unit shuts down. Okay you're probably asking yourself right now wait what how does this thing work? Well let me show you. So I've got the motor power unplugged so the unit doesn't fire up. It's really noisy and I don't want to have to talk over it but I can show you the sequence of events on how this operates. So with the wireless remote I just simply turn it on and that picks up the wireless switch which sends power over to the relay and the motor contactor starting up the unit and we can now make some dust. Now if I'm only making a couple cuts on my table saw and it takes me two minutes when I'm done with those cuts I just simply turn it off on the remote which drops out the wireless switch but since the relay hasn't timed out the system will continue to run. Now, once that time elapses, the system will shut down and that's all there is to it. Now, I used a normally open contact on that relay to create a sealing circuit and that's kind of how this whole thing really works. And lastly, I installed this e-stop switch so I can shut the machine down instantly if something happens and not have to wait for it to time out or run over to my breaker panel and shut the circuit off. So with this thing finally wired up, it's time to install my blast gates, fire it up and give it the official suck test. So 
So I was curious on how well I've done designing this system up to this point, and although I do have a couple loose ends to finish up, I thought I'd take some CFM reads at the tools that I do have hooked up. Now I'm gonna use my joiner as an example because I upgraded the four inch factory dust port to a six inch dust port, and I was curious about the reads between the two different size pipes. Now to calculate CFM, you need to know the airspeed and the cross-sectional area of the ductwork that you are using. So to find the airspeed, I used an anemometer and took reads in feet per minute. And to find out the cross-sectional area, you take pi times radius squared divided by 144 to convert that into square feet. Now with your square feet and your airspeed, you multiply those together to give you CFM. Now when I had the four inch pipe hooked up to this, I had air speeds of 7,000 feet per minute, which gave me 610 CFM. Now when I converted it to six inch pipe, I had air speeds of 5,600 feet per minute, which gives me 1,099 CFM at the tool, which almost doubles the CFM at the tool and gives me a lot better fine dust collection, making sure I keep that out of my lungs. So aside from a few loose ends to finish up, this system is up and running, at least for all my major tools. So my joiner is the only tool that I actually did a true six inch hookup to. The rest of the tools are either gonna come later on or as I upgrade the tools. Now there is a uh, option for my planer. There's a guy that makes a custom six inch hood that you can modify your DeWalt planer to accept that, which I might look into that down the road. Now my table saw, I was gonna do a six inch hookup to, but I decided to leave the four inch factory um, hookup because I'm gonna be making a custom four inch overarm dust hood for it, which I've decided that's gonna be the best option to maximize the actual dust collection at that tool. Now, my bandsaw, I, I've got a couple parts to get at least one of the four inch hookups to it, but I need to purchase a six inch to dual four inch Y to get maximized collection at it. So I'm gonna have to work on that. And same with my uh, oscillating belt sander, I've gotta come up with a good plan to collect from that because the factory hookup on it is only two inch and, and necking this six inch system down to a two inches kind of defeats the purpose. So going over over to my miter saw, um, which I didn't touch on very much. It was pretty much the same as what I did with everything else. Once it gets into the enclosure, it's just got a four inch Y. One of the legs of the Ys has got a four inch blast gate that I can open up and I will enclose that system so it helps keep a negative pressure and prevent that dust from blowing back in my face and getting collected into the system. Now the other leg of that is just neck down to two inch that plugs directly in the tool. And although that is not a good way to do it in this application, that's all I have right now. And it is collecting dust, just not as efficiently as I wanted to. Now, before I get into the cost and how I purchased this unit, I wanna leave a couple links down in my description, um, links that help me set this system up. Now, the first one is actually Bill Pence's website on how to set up a dust collection system. It's got a heap of knowledge um, everything from how to calculate your static pressures, how to calculate CFM, how much CFM you need at each tool, the list goes on. Whether or not you're setting up one of his systems or another brand, I would highly suggest researching that or going to his website and reading through it because it'll just really help you plan it out and understand what you need to do to have a very efficient system. And not that my system's a poster child for the best one out there, I definitely took some shortcuts to make things look more aesthetically pleasing, which probably cut back on some of the efficiency, but I was happy with the numbers that I do have now. now now the second link is written by a guy named Dr. Rod Cole, and it's written on the matter of the, the concern of the static discharge that people are worried about in this PVC pipe system. The conditions can't be met in a home shop. The static charge that's there or you're seeing is not strong enough to ignite the dust in the pipe, nor are the conditions met with airflow and the dust volumes inside the pipe. Now going back to that, if you read through Bill Pence's uh, research article on it, he talks about proper air speeds in your pipe, and that is a concern. You wanna make sure that your system is efficient and has proper air speeds to entrain the wood chips in the airstream to make it all the way to the dust collector and not stack up or build up in your pipes, creating a potential concern if you were to clip a nail on a joiner or a planer, sending a hot ember up into the pipe and igniting that wood pile. So I'm gonna leave those two links down in my description below. I'm not grinding my system, so I'd appreciate it if you don't leave comments telling me to because I'm not going to. Now for the cost and how I purchased this, I'm gonna break this down in a couple categories. One will be the cost of the unit. The second one will be all the special fittings and third category is going to be all just the PVC material that I, I bought locally. So the the unit itself after shipping was $2,676 and the specialty fittings that I either bought you know blast gates or some extra six inch flex hose things like that came up to uh, $316 and then all of my PVC material actually came out to $801 giving me a grand total of $3,793. 
Now, this is probably give or take 100 bucks. I probably left out a couple small things, but this is where I owe you guys a huge thank you. All of you people that have been following me from the beginning to you guys that are just now following me, I was able to purchase this whole system off the revenue that I've generated off this YouTube channel. So I wanna say thank you to you guys. I really appreciate everyone watching my videos and supporting the channel. I couldn't have done it without you. So normally at this time, I uh, say instead of subscribing, grab a broom because the shop's not gonna clean itself and it definitely goes to today because my shop is tore up. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.